davidike.com and if you have a chance don't miss David. He's coming to the U.S. to make several stops. Uh, it's a, a life-changing, uh, unforgettable experience. And he's been at it so long. He has so much information. And I can see how an all-day event would literally uh, have people walking out, uh, different people. Here's something, David, that I found. You mentioned uh, Dr. Day and, and Orwell uh, talking about things that were off in the future this, I found this years and years ago, and I, had, I have kept it ever since. It's fascinating. It's called Jules Verne's Dark Vision of Modern Life. You may or not, may not know about this, but it's, it's fascinating. Let me read just a little bit of this, if I might. Um, this is 1835, and, and this was written was 1863. Uh, what happened was a manuscript that was written by Jules Verne, was rejected by his publisher. And it ended up being stuck in a safe. All right? And it was found in 1994 and was ultimately published. When it was written, Jules Verne was only 35 years of age, uh, with one highly acclaimed book to his credit. Uh, when he began writing, and the book was called Paris in the 20th Century, by hand, no typewriters yet, uh, his pages were illuminated by a, a small gas lamp as he worked away. Electric lights still 15 years <coughs> off in the future. Now get this one. The book's protagonist is named Michel uh, Dufresnoy. Uh, he lived nearly a century into the future in this, in this particular book. This is a, a future vision book that he's writing. The year was 1960. And as Verne wrote it, technology and automation had supplanted the culture of the 1800s. Elevators whisked people up and down buildings. Now, remember, this is 1865 he's writing this. Elevators took people up and down uh, tall buildings. Trains took them back and forth from the suburbs. Images, he called them facsimiles. This is 1865. Could be sent thousands of miles away by what he called photographic telegraph. He predicted facts. Uh, something we might today... Uh, not bad an eye over. Neon lights, unknown in 1863, illuminated Verne's avenues in, in Paris. Concerts were performed in 10,000-seat auditoriums by single artists using electric amplifiers. And of the, this is a quote now, of the innumerable cars that passed on the paved roads, most moved without horses. And he wrote this 25 years before the first prototype automobile ever appeared. He said they were propelled by an invisible force, the force of 20 or 30 horses by means of a motor run by gas combustion. Verne's heroes, however, and this is the dark side, quote, no longer stood in admiration of these marvels, end quote. He went on to say, they just quietly took advantage of them without being any happier because of their speeded pace and their American passion. One could feel the devil of money pushing them forward non-stop and without mercy. Jules Verne, 1863. Well, that was spot on, wasn't it? It's, um, it's amazing how the many examples come up of how the future is predicted and um, how different people access that future, um, you know, maybe different, but one key way is that um, that future is projected um, by this hidden force. And the, um, the thing that the alternative, much of the alternative media is going to have to face, uh, so a lot of it already does, is that, uh, that there's a, a question here, um, uh, which I asked 20-odd uh, years ago. Um, it, when you look at how this um, this transformation of the world has unfolded step by step, and how people have um, been born, um, served this agenda, died, then other people have come in and served this agenda and died, um, uh, and they were never going to see this um, this thing uh, reach its fruition. 
Um, so why would they do it? Um, and why would they do it generation after generation? There mm-hmm. has to be a common theme, a common force, which spans all these generations that have incessantly uh, has pushed this agenda on, no matter who's been in, in the White House, who's been in Downing Street, who's right. been the CEO or whatever. There, there's this and uh, there's a force in the background. And, you know, when you look at um, uh, ancient accounts and, and, and the, the accounts of, of, of ancient uh, uh, cultures and the, the oral and other history that has uh, passed through to present uh, time um, uh, uh, across the great spectrum of different peoples, there is a common theme. Um, Christians call it demons. Uh, uh, Islam calls them jinn. Uh, Gnostics call them archons. They're, they're the um, the Zulus call them Chittahuri, but uh, the, 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 the big, big penny drop is that they are talking about the same force. It's a force um, uh, in the hidden, which is manipulating human society. Um, and these people who are serving this agenda, generation after generation, pushing it on, that which knows what the future uh, is designed to be long before that future unfolds, um, is... Um, is, is is they are just um, uh, vehicles for this force to impose that future step by step, mm-hmm. and and if if you if you are part of that network or you can tap into it in some way, then you can you can predict the future because you. Um, you are simply saying what the plan is, and like we said at the start, unless there's an intervention, that plan will happen. Um, and, and so it's this force which um, uh, even much of the mainstream, uh, the alternative media will not look at because it is closed to anything beyond 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 human. Um, much as the mainstream is. I mean, you, you know, I've been ridiculed uh, and uh, dismissed for what I'm saying in this, these deeper uh, levels of, of, uh, of <laughs> oh, have you by, ever. The, by the alternative media as much as I have by the, yes. by the mainstream, yeah. because th- that too is in, is in a mind prison. It's a perception prison, and it's, it needs to open its mind up, if we're going to really understand what's going on, to the fact there is a common force that spans these different people coming in and out, uh, serving the agenda what is that force because clearly it exists google is an absolute monster just like facebook and all these uh, uh, internet giants that are merely the internet uh, um, outgrowth from the mainstream media of newspapers radio and television that we had before controlled again by the same networks and uh, you know as newspapers um, uh, fall in terms of their circulations and will eventually go out of uh, business uh, in the face of the electronic media well nothing changes because the electronic media is controlled ultimately by the same networks that have controlled the newspapers etc up to this point uh, this former investigative journalist on the news of the world was telling me how the you know that that was structured and how the paper she worked on was structured mm-hmm. in this compartmentalized way mm-hmm. but basically the, the the journalists have no idea where the um the, the, the line of the newspaper is coming from, why, where the um, uh, decisions of what they will report and what they won't report and how they will report it are actually coming from, because they only know the next level up. They don't know where it's really coming from. Well, it's from. the same thing as a, a, a teller in a bank, uh, the person at the window that takes your uh, check and gives you cash. They don't know what the managers know. The managers don't know what the district uh, managers understand, the corporation execs. And they don't, and most of them don't even know about the Federal Reserve. They never even heard about it. Now, maybe they've heard about it, but they don't understand any of it. Here's another thing. You mentioned Google. Now, this is really uh, critical. Google, I've been saying for a long time, Google is God, lowercase. Google is God. Google is such an enormous uh, monstrosity on the planet. It is so evil. Google, just so you know, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Google workers had... 427 meetings at the White House over the course of Obama's seven and a half years in office, averaging more than one a week. Why? Ask yourself, why 427 meetings at the White House? What's going on with Google? 
There you yeah, go. Yeah, yeah, that, that, something similar, not that much, not that many, but something similar happens with with the British government as well. And what Google have done is change the name of of much of their company to Alphabet um, uh, to hide the extent of Google, because Google is such a buzzword in people's minds and so well known that when you see Google everywhere, I mean, what's Google doing in robotics? What's Google doing in in um, transhumanist technology? Genetics, so they, they, all of it. All they of it. change the uh, they change the name to alphabet so that it, it's a, it, alphabet is such a terrible name but it, it, it it's a name you can easily forget and and it, it's not a buzzword like google so they're just hiding the extent of what that google uh, uh giant monster um is actually doing and this is all fundamental this darpa uh, google connection is fundamental to what we were talking about earlier yeah. about this yeah. transhumanist agenda because you know kurzweil um is uh, talking about having people connected to the, their minds connected to the cloud as he calls it um, by 2030 and and you know I've, I've got a new book out called um, uh, Phantom Self which refers to the um, fake self-identity we are awareness we are the state of being aware we are infinite awareness uh, that's that's what we are everything else is detail but Phantom self is the self identity with your name, your your race, your your uh, income bracket, your your country, your um, your religion, whatever, and and uh, w- which basically is um, the, the 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 conscious mind uh, perception of self identity, and that um, focus of attention on um, what I call phantom self, self identity. I am my name. I am my race, and all that stuff. Um, uh, disconnects us that focus from the greater an influence of the greater consciousness beyond this uh, program reality. But what I'm um, what, what, there's a chapter in the book, and I call it transphantomism, and I call it that because it's taking this disconnection from conscious mind. Uh, uh, self-identity uh, disconnection from between that and expanded awareness to a whole new level by um, connecting the conscious uh, mind uh, and what we call the, the human level if you like uh, by connecting it to this um, this technological sub-reality that they're creating which um, Kurzweil calls the cloud the idea of transhumanism is to connect uh, uh, people technologically to this cloud. So the cloud does their thinking for them. So they get the, everything from the cloud. This this um, uh, AI, artificial intelligence, uh, 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 running this whole technological uh, uh, grid, this this cloud, becomes basically the, um, the 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 mind that is dictating the perceptions of the population. So the idea is is that uh, people become nothing more than a biological uh, computer terminal on this cloud, which the Internet is fundamentally a, a part, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and it's unfolding uh, all the time. And, and they're telling us, I mean, it's not that they're hiding it anymore. No. People like Kurzweil are telling no. us, and they're telling us on the basis of the sales pitch, which is, by doing this, we'll become superhuman, but we won't. We'll become subhuman. That's the whole idea. And what they're doing is they're, they're taking us, you know, here, kitty kitty, along this road where they start out with um, what you might call holdables, the smartphones and the tablets. They move on then to what they call wearables. These are the smart watches and the Google Glass and the Bluetooth. And and now they're moving into um, what they call implantables. Um, more and more and more, they're getting uh-huh. inside the body. Uh-huh. And the idea is to use that um, implanted technology, um, which people accept willingly because it makes me superhuman, to connect them to this technological sub-reality run by artificial intelligence. That's where this is going. That's what chance humanism is all about and um and a, a part of this they're taking the away that, their humanity david exactly. they're taking what's and, and left it's it's it, part of this whole agenda is to create the synthetic human um which which has no does not procreate um that's done uh, again technologically in laboratory uh, uh, uh means exactly what older Suxley predicted in uh, brave new world this is 
why they are uh, having these great studies to create a synthetic human. Um, and and this is where a lot of this, uh, and, and, and even the end of sex is even, is, is where they, uh, they, they want to go. And, and so um, we're seeing... Um, the uh, the move in front of our eyes day after day. Oh, is the latest technology, and everyone wants one. Let's queue in the middle of the night to be the first to get the next level of control. Um, we're seeing in front of our eyes the um, the destruction and the disappearance of everything that we uh, uh, accepted to be human up to this point. So, so there is no human left. That's the idea. And, That's and where they're taking this, us. Yeah. It's this force in the background that we talked about earlier that so much of the alternative media just dismisses and don't want to talk about. It's this force that's behind it. What we see, the people we see who are doing it, are merely the vehicles for this force. And um, um, we, we, we need to understand very, very urgently what's, what's going on here because uh, we're being taken along this road and so many people are, are walking along it. I mean, you know, the addiction to this technology right. is so fantastic. It is. For me, is. there's something coming off it. There's something coming off it in terms of some kind of uh, artificial intelligence, whatever you want to call it. There's mm -hmm. something coming off it that is um, making this addiction even more fierce and extreme than it would otherwise be. It's, it's an addiction to, it's a dehumanizing addiction that is bizarre to watch uh, because the sheep don't get it. And there's some smart sheep out there. They still yeah. don't get it. They think this technology is going to make them, as you said, superhuman. No, it's going to make them subhuman. It's gone. Exactly. And we're, and we're being led along this, this road. Um, and, you know, if you're in any way awake, it's an open book. But if you're not, right, if, right, if, right. If, you, if you are addicted to the phone, and of course, what generation is addicted to phones more than any other is the younger generations, of course, who are being brought up from birth now. I mean, you see grotesque sights like I saw recently um, in a restaurant where the, 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 the parents are having their meal. And and uh -huh. this baby in a high chair playing with a with a smartphone. No, um, it's, it's a baby. extraordinary. Yeah, shame on those parents. Oh, they'll never get it. But that's that's where we go. This is the most important thing uh, for people to understand uh, at the moment, and is this this transhumanist agenda for connecting us to um, a <laughs> technological reality that will do our thinking for us. And it's not just me saying that. Kurzweil saying that. Mm -hmm. Kurzweil saying that um, what will happen is that uh, we'll be connected to this what he calls this cloud, and then um, gradually the cloud will do more and more of our thinking until there's no no human left. He's A saying that. Yes, yes. You AI, know, AI will be your friend. AI yeah. will bury you. That's what now, will happen. This is the question. This is the question that I ask in um, in these uh, uh, talks and, and and put forward some answers to it. What is AI? This is the question. I don't hear this being asked. What is AI? We, you know, it's this buzz phrase: artificial mm -hmm. intelligence. Mm -hmm. Artificial intelligence will, mm -hmm. will 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 run fighter planes. Will We'll run the internet. We'll run this. We'll make run your that. hamburgers for you. Yeah, with exactly. Robots. So yeah. then, we, then we then we ask the question: What is this artificial intelligence? Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you what my answer is: This artificial intelligence is basically that which has been manipulating this world from the hidden um, for so long. It's a technological vehicle which humans are being manipulated to create the smart grid and the smart technology and the based on Wi-Fi, the cloud. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's, it's a vehicle that's being created for this hidden force, which has been given the name in this context, artificial intelligence, to take the freaking world over. And by connecting humanity to the cloud, taking every human mind over. That is what's happening. And, uh, the, the, of course, much of the alternative media even doesn't want to go there. This is what's happening, and we need to understand it. What a, what a critically important thing, and I hope all of you will remember that as you make your way along. It is being pushed at us around the clock in ways that we're not even, uh, I don't even see. These people have planned this for so long, and they're so damn clever about it. And there are, of course, uh, EMF uh, issues, uh, embedded frequencies in, in every kind of electronic medium. 
that can be used. I believe personally that the the electric grid, David, is uh, is being used as a vehicle to put frequencies that will influence the masses. We're surrounded by wiring in our homes. Uh, we know that the electric grid can carry television, radio, cable TV, but it's not because those industries are separate. But the electric grid is is not being discussed. And I tell this quick story. A friend of mine, Dr. Pat Flanagan, you know, you know, Pat, uh, no, no other. Yep, yep. Uh, he went over to a friend's house. He walked into the garage. The guy was a kind of a garage genius and he had a scope on and there was a particular wave on this oscilloscope. And Pat recognized it immediately as the lily wave. And he said, what are you doing with the lily wave? You know, what kind of work are you doing? And the guy turned and looked at him and he was kind of shocked, according to what Pat said. And he says, you never guess where that's coming from. And Pat said, where? And he pointed to the wall plug. He said, it's in the electric grid. And it didn't just get there by itself. This is, this is precisely what's happening. Whether it's, whether it's that or whether it is the uh, astonishing increase in atmospheric technologically generated oh. radiation, whether it's this smart technology, whether it's the, 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 the uh, Wi-Fi cloud, which, of course, they're putting satellites up now to make sure there's no area of the Earth that's not covered by Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi of the world. Yeah, and the, the, that's, the, 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 this is not clearly uh, not so that um, everyone, uh, even in the desert, can be on the grid, uh, on the, the web. It's, it's because um, the cloud is the technological sub-reality um, in all its various forms, including the electrical grid. Um, and therefore, um, they need to make sure no one can escape anywhere from the cloud, which we're they are high. designed to be connected to. This is what's happening. We're, we're seeing a, a, a whole sub-reality being created, which humanity is planned to be tapped into, and therefore uh, the ability to expand your awareness beyond that cloud will then be uh, closing in on near impossible. That's the idea. Um, and um, that is uh, what's happening in front of our eyes all the time um, as this technological uh, society um, goes on uh, moving. And if you've got, you've got to connect the dots, you've got to connect the dots with it, and then you see the picture. If you just see it in isolation, it's just this technological madness or addiction to smartphones. Oh, that's, that's not good. And, and oh, do you know all, the, all these studies that show that this technological, um, uh, these technological smart sources are rewiring the brain so that they have a lower yeah, well, yeah. attention span, etc. Oh, that's not very good, is it? Well, um, connect all the dots. Connect what Kurzweil is saying. Connect all the dots and you see what's happening. Um, and that is what I've just described. Well, summed up uh, remarkably, the, uh, the cloud it sounds like a, a, a sci-fi movie plot. The cloud takes over human consciousness, takes over humanity, takes over the planet. We're run by the cloud after 75% of the world population is destroyed in the coming World War III. Uh, the cloud. What yeah, a something, else, something else that um, Kurzweil says is um, nanobots, these nan nanotechnologies, uh, also known as smart dust and uh, many other names, Nanobots will infuse all matter around us with information. Rocks, trees, everything will become these intelligent creatures. Um, in other words, they'll become this uh, part of this this whole um, control system, this whole sub-reality. Yeah. So, so how, how how are they infusing um, uh, everything? Rocks, trees, everything, as he says, with these um, with these nanobots, with this nanotechnology. Well, one of the ways they're doing it is chemtrails. That's one of the things that's coming out of chemtrails is nanotechnology on, on a vast scale um, and uh, in, in, in other ways too. Um, the, it, it, this, all this nanotechnology in food and everything, it's, it's just passing it out and, and putting it in human bodies and putting it in the environment um, to, to as part of this whole new technological, what, what, what they want to be eventually, um, uh, a synthetic world uh, full of synthetic people connected to a... Um, a technological um, a control system. Yeah. That, that's where we're going. And, and you know, they're, they're not talking about, you know, 100 years from now. 
Kurzweil is talking about this uh, basically being in place, uh, or at least the start of it, by 2030. They're, they're so in a hurry. They're in a hurry. Is, they're in a hurry, and they're in a hurry, uh, uh, Jeff, for the reason we talked about earlier. They know humanity is awakening to a more expanded view of mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. And um, although this um, technological control system has been planned all along, um, by this this force um, uh, outside the the human realm, um, the, the 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 desperation and the speed that they want to push it in is is um, is motivated by knowing that there is a, there is a, a, a limit on um, on how long they can um, not get this control before humanity is awakened enough to see the game in right. enough numbers to make a difference. So the, the, this next period, this next. Uh, uh, three years will be very, very important, but the next 10 years will be extremely important to uh, where this world goes.